The very latest, the coronavirus is now linked to six deaths in China, and international airports are beefing up their screenings, including here in Canada. Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver are using thermal technology to screen people for flu-like symptoms. Three potential cases of coronavirus have been tested here in Canada. They have all come back negative. This is ahead of an emergency meeting by the World Health Organization that is now set for tomorrow. Joining us today is infectious disease specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. Good to have you back on the program. Thanks for having me back. Uh, we know this virus has now been transmitted human to human, these six deaths uh, being reported in China. Uh, when people, this has started in a marketplace, when people started to pick up fresh food there in uh, Wuhan, cases were then being confirmed in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong province. It has spread outside the country now. We know to Thailand, Japan, and South Korea. People here want to know, What's the risk of it landing in Canada? Certainly it's not 0%, but the risk is still very low. Luckily, uh, we've been through this before. I mean, sadly, we've been through this before, but also, you know, Canada is also sensitized to this. So with SARS in 2002, you know, we, we've, we've, uh, we've experienced the importation of a, of a new virus, and we have systems in place to help protect us should a, uh, an infection get imported. Uh, those of us who covered SARS remember it started very similar, animal to animal, animal to human, human to human. But nobody raised the alarm bell until quite late, until we saw many deaths. Uh, what did we learn from SARS? Yeah, I mean, I think we learned how to be better prepared for imported infectious diseases. And, uh, you know, for example, uh, hospitals and emergency departments uh, are, are better equipped to rapidly identify people with influenza-like symptoms, to isolate them, to put masks on people earlier, and also to protect healthcare workers as well who are caring for ill individuals. Uh, when you, what would it present like? So let's say we have a case that lands here. We have all the testing has been negative. We have a case that lands here uh, in Canada. What does that look like? What's the procedure? It's pretty tricky because you know the the presenting symptoms might be very similar to a, a regular flu or flu-like illness. People might have a fever, cough, or shortness of breath. And the key point here is that a travel history. Uh, is, is essential. So if people are, have been identified as being uh, near uh, where this outbreak is occurring and then have, have come into Canada, if they went to a hospital, they'd be identified as they come in at triage and, uh, and they'd be isolated in a room and they'd, they'd likely be given a mask to wear. Uh, the healthcare providers would, be, would use uh, the regular personal protective equipment when they're, while they're caring for this individual. The public health labs throughout the, uh, throughout the country are now prepared to receive and process samples so that we can uh, identify at, uh, this virus and rule it in or, or rule it out. So there are certainly systems in place to manage cases should there be the uh, odd case of importation. That would be one of the lessons from SARS. That was the criticism last time around is that the screening wasn't in place equally across the country. Uh, people didn't know what they were looking for and identified it late. Yeah, but I think the key difference here between now and 2002 is, you know, the, the technology is a, a lot better. Also, our systems are, are a lot better. And, you know, it's only been 22 or 23 days from the time that we've known that there was an outbreak occurring to, uh, you know, we've rapid, we meaning the medical and scientific community and, uh, you know, especially the Chinese medical and scientific community has sequenced the virus. This has been made publicly available. There's a, a World Health Organization meeting tomorrow. So there's been a lot more cooperation and communication about this outbreak compared to years past. And I think that's a, a very, very positive note. Are you concerned? No, not really. I mean, I think it, no one would, would bat an eye if there are more exported cases. No one would be surprised if there are more uh, cases within China. But I think as a, as, a, as, a, you know, as a country and certainly globally, we're much more prepared now in, compared to the past to, to, to handle uh, exported infectious diseases. Very quickly, you mentioned if we had been to any of those countries. What if you've been through an airport? Is your, should you be concerned? I mean, not, not really. I, I really don't think so. I mean, certainly this is a very fluid uh, uh, situation, but, but currently it looks like uh, you know, it would, it would, someone would have to have traveled to China uh, to really have a possible exposure to this, especially to Wuhan, but now it seems that it's popping up in other settings as well. Dr. Isaac Bogosh, thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.